Alright, hello and welcome everyone here to SIVO. It's the rebirth of Maine here as we go into SIVO Season 6 Maine. You can see it's week 1-1, one, one, day 1, the very first game of the event. It will be Leviathan who have made quite a splash these days in the Dota scene, especially in the yeah. Americas. And Team Rare Candy, just formerly known as Literally Gaming. I'm Helium and with me is Ted. Yep, literally changing their name on us last second. Classic NA Dota, but we'll move past it. We still love these guys, and we hope that they'll make a pretty big splash in the NA scene from this point moving forward. And they're going to go ahead and first ban Pudge versus Leviathan. That respect. You know? Yeah, heavy respect coming out. We always talk about Leviathan's uh, amazing Pudge play, and unfortunately we don't get to see it tonight as he's our best of ones this draft stands. But we'll go from here. Yeah, so there's the, the double respect. They'll take out Jenkins Pudge, and then they take out the Leviathan himself, the Tidehunter. <laughs> Obviously quite popular. Goes very well in the Radiant offlane, or any offlane, or any lane. The hero, quite good, quite popular. Although Leviathan, they'll ban, I guess, the pushing Lycan. I, somewhat team fight, maybe tempo hero. That can be the Ember Spirit. Goes well into the late game. And it's the Brewmaster pickup first, which we see Shibi Dota play all the time. Definitely something to respect, but Rare Candy wastes no time with their next two picks. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and drop the Faceless Void Centaur combo. Two heroes that are just insanely good pace controllers in the game. Centaur taking a really good uh, offlane role as he just he's unkillable if you play him right. But Elder Titan will come out from Leviathan, so you've got that natural order which has been being seen a lot recently and is well suited for the role as it is an incredibly good spell. Dire team ban. Oh... Phoenix taking the fall. No caca, yeah. no egg, no protect the VIP, the sun, the egg, whatever you want to call it. Also, yeah, Broodmother's still in the game. Yeah, that's true. No Broodmother Lycan, as we saw Vici, or who even pulled that out earlier? That was utterly ridiculous. But the draft's going pretty quickly, so Ogre's gone. Uh, a lot of the key supports get banned out here with the Ogre, the Skyrath, and the Witch Doctor. But now we've got Jakiro which is obviously a pretty staple pick of any lineup these days. But more surprisingly, the Silencer comes out third, already trying to shut down, I guess, the Brewmaster with that pick. Yeah, that's going to be a really uh, really effective shutdown as Brewmaster with that increased cast point, which has been talked about a lot recently. It's a lot easier to cancel that one off. And with the Silencer and the Jakiro as well as, well, I mean, Chronosphere and Hoof Stomp, they've got plenty of ways to just make sure this Brewmaster can't get his ult off Five when he wants range. to. So we'll see if a Leviathan can play around this successfully. They've already picked up the Marana and the Wraith King. Wraith King being a very good, um, just sit in the middle of the team fight and deal your damage hero. But in terms of mobility, he isn't really that great. So he'll give a lot in aura, but I wonder how they're going to make Ten this one work. Remaining. Yeah, we already, with that Wraith King pickup and the Marana you mentioned, there's a lot of signature heroes for Leviathan's players. Like, Marana, gonna be Nusham 100%. Wraith King, on most teams, probably the hero in general, more popular as a support, but Shredder will play that on the core, and he'll probably go for his Radiance buildup, which is definitely unorthodox when it comes to the Wraith King and competitive matches. But Leviathan, not the most orthodox team, and I would consider Brewmaster uh, a signature hero of Shibi Dota. So the Elder Titan is sort of the odd pick here for the players in particular. I, I'm guessing Jenkins is on that. Uh, but obviously Elder Titan getting played a lot these days. Astral Spirit proving to be really good. Oh yeah, I'm, I, I can't remember. I think he's been played in about 50 to 70% of the games I've been watching recently. And I can take a look right now and he might be played... Uh, yeah, he's even in the game right now for BTS. So like... This guy has been picked up so often recently, and it, it's, he almost came out of nowhere, kind of like a flavor of the month sort of thing. But It's all No-Tail's fault. It's, it's got to be, and I, I got to say this hero is it's really taking over as being one of those heroes you just got to have in your lineup if you want to deal damage in the late game. Indeed, and they'll definitely have a lot of it. They'll have tons yeah, of magic yeah. damage coming off from Brewmaster, the AoE magic damage from Starstorm, which, you know, is pretty good. It's like 525 to the person who hits twice, and 300 to everyone else. Obviously, Wraith King will be a strong physical force, and he'll have the element of the Radiance, I would guess, since it's going to be Shredder playing that, if it is Shredder oh, playing yeah. it. Uh, so that's also going to hurt with the Astral Spirit. But we've got Jakiro Silencer... Do you expect either of those heroes to take a core role, or will they just be sort of supports? I don't know. I mean, obviously, Jakiro can do either, and I don't really care yeah. about him. I'm more concerned. What do you think Silencer is going to do? 
Well, I, I gotta say, I think Shakira is gonna be playing that support role because they've got the Centaur Warhunter already picked up, and they are on one more pick, so it really would be telling what they do from this point on. I think Leviathan thinks it's going to be a support uh, silencer as well as they had banned out the Templar Assassin, kind of giving the shot that they think they're gonna be picking up a mid next. Um, but I don't think I'd put the silencer in the mid as you don't exactly win that lane versus a brewmaster. You can get a lot of damage off on him, but he's got way too much sustain and you're not going to be getting any last hits either. So I'd be surprised if they run him as that mid core role and as all they really need from him is his global silence and they, they're good. Yeah. As long as you can get it to level six at a decent time, uh, obviously like even though you don't normally do like, all right, we're going to create space for our support, but I feel like as the cores here, as we see them now, Razor, Centaur, and Faceless Void, like they can create a ton of space elsewhere while Silencer maybe takes lane farm for a couple, you know, spawns of creep to get to that level six, maybe to finish a four staff. Uh, but yep. that's going to be pretty terrifying. So the, the old school Faceless Void, Razor combo that we see a lot of, I think Faceless Void is fantastic with the Jakiro. Shakiro really good with or against the Faceless Void, to be honest. Shakiro's good as on his own. He's or with anybody, yeah. Liquid a really fire good hero. Is, is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so Leviathan going for their last pick now. I would expect maybe they run this Elder Titan as a true support. I guess they can put Marana in the offlane as well. Nushim generally plays it as a 4 or a 5. So I'm expecting another support pickup. Team Rare Candy was not, though. They banned out a Viper. So they were looking for yep. another core. They yeah, probably Leviathan think Race King's right. a support. I I don't know, like Wraith King, he definitely has played a lot as that hard five role, but Le we trust Leviathan to really shake things up and their draft is not giving anything away. Like all of these guys can play as a solo core role and I've seen all of them played as that role. If I were to take a guess, I'd say the Elder Titan would be playing a support. Um, actually, sorry, Elder Titan would be playing a core and he just throw the Marana and the Wraith King as roaming supports and then they'll just be picking up something like a, uh, a a soft carry for their last pick and then go from there like I, something maybe with some range probably a uh, well a ranged carry is pretty hard to come by nowadays but i, I don't know if they're going to be going along the lines of the support at this point i'd be surprised if shredder doesn't play wraith king honestly but i would agree generally if it was any other team i'd be saying Moran and wraith king are going to be the supports running around killing people yeah. Uh, looks like Leviathan. Maybe it weren't so sure of it either, but there we go. They'll pull uh -huh. out a support. I'm not sure if Bane was available, but Shadow Demon Marana, the combo is is pretty undeniable. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I didn't even think about that. I the Bane Marana, the Shadow Demon Marana, those are those take me way back. Those take everyone way back as being one of those popular things that you'd always have to expect. And well, I guess we have to expect in this game, as they will be playing that Shredder Wraith King. As always, so we'll expect the Radiance from him. Uh, yeah, I mean, Mirana Shadow Demon, it's great, right? Like, you can you can definitely win the laning stage with those heroes. And even if you don't dominate the laning stage by getting pickoffs just all across the map, like, they're still good later. Shadow Demon, fantastic support into the late game. Mirana is a decent split pusher. She can get a ton of items up and running uh, and be quite a threat later on. Um, but I don't know. I think it makes it pretty pretty easy. I don't know. It's almost like a cheesy pick, but it's really not because it's still good throughout the rest of the game. But here we go. The teams. It'll be Rare Candy here on the Dire. And to introduce them, we'll start with the Razor here. That's going to be Ice. Skull Ice on the Razor. Checking out the Silencer. That's going to be Furret. And that will be a support as he does have the sentries and some consumables. It'll be easy over on the Jakiro ward, so it's also supporting on the Jakiro. No surprise there. What the surprise may be is that they're going an aggressive tri lane, which is going to give Street Light a safe lane void. Wouldn't maybe have expected that. And also a little out of the ordinary, we'll have K292 playing that Centaur War Runner in the middle lane. Yeah, and uh, taking a look to the other side, it's going to be Leviathan, our all-stars that have been coming back time and time again and really showing other teams up. It is going to be Shredder on the Wraith King with Sunken, taking a look at Easy face-to-face -face on the Shadow Demon, coming around from behind us, Nusham on the Marana. Back towards the mid lane, we got Shivy on the Brewmaster and Jenkins on the Elder Titan. Oh, there's a disruption. They got the illusions out from the shadow. The arrow hit as well. Fear it's getting pretty low. Ice is going to throw out that static link level one. It's not great. 
There's a Wraith Fire Blast here available from Shredder, but he's not going to throw that out either. Wants to keep the mana maybe for the lane when they get there. It's Shadow Demon who's wasted a little bit. He'll be rewarded with a Bounty Rune, and it looks like we will be punished with a pause. Some lag issues at the start of the game. Yeah, we come to expect this kind of thing, though, as, well, lag happens, and pauses usually are the start of most American Dota games, so we can take a step back and just take a I look think at all what Dota happened. games. <laughs> Yeah, but Ferret comes out of that initial engagement with 82 HP, which means he's going to have to go all the way back to base. I'm surprised they're not going to use their regen on him, but if you think back, it makes a little bit of sense that they don't want to put all of that on him at the start of the game. That leaves him with a little bit less when the when the going gets tough. Um, and all that's gone on the side of Leviathan is a little bit of mana. So I think the engage really favored Leviathan there. It's going to mean that... It's going to be a little bit further behind than he'd like to be coming into the first couple of minutes, but he should be able to catch up fairly easily. Yeah, I like the decision for Silencer to run back to the base a little bit more because you use your regen and you're in an aggressive tri lane. Like, you need yeah. your regen to stay in the yeah. lane once you start fighting. It's like your fuel for aggression. And if you run out of it, well, then Leviathan are going to feel very confident. So yep. it's still a downside to go back because now it's going to be 2v3 and this is a very good time to get a kill. Nushim lining up the arrow off the disruption. It will land. There's an ice path that's going to slow them down a little bit. Wraithfire blast now. And this is the core razor about to go down. It's the first blood. Shredder on the Wraith King is going to pick it up, so that core Wraith King off to a fantastic start already. Yeah, they're both going to TP back immediately after that one. They don't want to lose any ground. And having three stuns like that is really good in a sort of tri lane versus tri lane situation. And they only had two, as you mentioned, so it was a little bit weaker on their part to do anything. So, I mean, they got a little bit more XP being two people in the lane, but they lost the first blood, and that's not something that you want to be doing. No, not at all. And we'll go up top. We'll check out Jenkins on the Elder Titan as he matches up against the Faceless Void. Currently, Jenkins the most last hits on the map. He's 6-0. and Void 4-0. Playing a little catch-up here. Uh, but Elder Titan going to be getting a lot of levels. And an over-leveled Elder Titan is just so hard to deal with. Like, you have this Jakiro. You're going to want to push towers. But how are you going to get to the towers when this Elder Titan is going to be level 8 probably by the time you really look to group up and push some towers down? Yeah, when you take a look from the top down, out last hitting an Elder Titan in a 1v1 situation is one of the hardest things to do because he can steal all that damage, not steal all that damage, but get all that extra damage from the uh, Astral Spirit, and it's it's a lot to handle. And he's hitting for, what is it, 78? He gets about 22 damage per steal, so it's it's a pretty good chunk of damage that Faceless Void's going to have to compete with, and he just really can't as another disruption in the bottom lane. Let's see where it is. It's going to be on to easy, but it looks like Skull Ice will take the arrow, and he's going to fall out of all the targets there. The Soul Catcher will land on him, amplifying that damage. Right click clicks alone, only two armor on the Jakiro, not enough. Armor, very important in these tri lanes. I'm surprised to see, okay, at least Razor started with the Ring of Protection, but even buying Ring of Protections on the supports, as most of the damage in those tri lanes is purely physical, although not so much when it's Marana and Shadow Demon. That arrow and the Soul Catcher really does pack a punch. Yeah, at this point, it, it, it's a question of whether you want to continue going and throwing bodies at this bottom tri lane. I mean, they need some way to deal with this Elder Titan up top, so I, I would imagine that maybe their smartest option would just be to shuffle things around, because things aren't working in this bottom lane, and if they keep dying to this uh, Marana, as well the whole supporting cast down here anyway, if they keep giving them kills and giving them that gold, a Wraith King that gets early Radiance or whatever uh, Shredder likes to go for, and a farm Shadow Demon and Marana is impossible to deal with in the mid game. Yeah, oh, it, it's definitely the Radiance that he likes to go for. And here's another just narrowly missing that creep. The arrow will sail through. It's going to land on the Jakiro. He's down once again. So the Jakiro here uh, will go to the kills right now. Jakiro taking two deaths, Razor with two deaths, and oh, Silencer has remained 0 0 until they find him there. There's another disruption into... Actually, did they even use it? I think it was just the Wraithfire Blast nope. throwing oh, yeah, out. Yeah, it was Wraithfire Blast. And, and Nushim is actually down. might die to Skull Ice here. One more auto-attack and Skull, he backs out. And this is a, a smart move if he didn't want to die, but he'd have to do that a minute or two ago as he's now going to get chased through the trees. He might actually get away if Sunken doesn't cut him off. Will do so. Stealing some damage doesn't get disrupted by the disruption, and instead he's going to come out with some extra damage, but Shredder is in with the Wraithfire Blast. Nushan is backing out as well, and one more auto-attack, and should 
be enough. And well, this, three times over, two times over, they've lost all three. This look is at that. not Nushim, working out. Nushim with a bottle. He actually has Sunken's bottle, but either way, one of the supports with a bottle, they hand it off. Nushim will leap towards the rune. They've got this observer board here scouting the centaur running down, so they leap for the rune. They take the invis. Not only have they got six skills in the bottom lane, they'll also deny Centaur from uh, picking up a rune, and we'll check out his last hits here in mid. He's 16 and 5, Brewmaster 14 and 4, so at least mid is going a little bit better. But there's a rotation top now, easy. He'll leave that bottom lane. They realize they're losing it. They need to do something else. Tries to find a kill on Jenkins and will miss the ice path. Yeah, this is that shuffle that I thought was going to happen. 292 actually might die oh, here primal in the lane. Split. A primal split gets used, and they, yeah, he's, definitely he's dead. too low. So there's no way that anyone can come in and help him out there. And he actually might go for more. He sees Skull Ice, and Skull Ice is actually going to get caught out by this one. It's level They've three. Got the stone out, and yeah, the and arrow the comes supports. through. Oh, man. Eight and zero, and Leviathan is showing Rare Candy a hard time. Actually, hard, they get a kill candy. up top. Yeah, Rare Jenkins candy. will be brought down. Rare candy, but it's a hard time. So at least Streetlight gets a little bit for his troubles. It's actually going to be easy to pick that one up. And I, it's a bit of a consolation prize, but Jakiro is still level three. Faceless Void is level six, and there was no Chronosphere used for that kill. So he still got it. But at this point, when you're sitting eight and one, the XP and gold differences are not looking too good. Oh for my gosh. Game. And they'll throw a Wraithfire Blast into another arrow. The arrow stun is so long that Wraithfire Blast is now off of cooldown. He'll try to stampede. Shredder's still stunned. And actually, the Centaur will be able to run himself out of there with Stampede. Narrowly living, but now the push coming in on the bottom lane. We've got a point in Vampiric. Jenkins again in trouble up top. Or is it Streetlight who's in trouble now? Chrono still available. And he will actually run away and let Easy finish up the kill. The Astral Spirit maybe would have almost got yeah. that, but it didn't quite uh, hit him. And in the middle lane, we'll find another kill. It looks like Sunken is going to get that one on, I guess that's uh, Skull Ice on the Razor that goes down there in the middle lane. Yeah, and they're giving Void, or they're getting Void some sort of uh, advantage in this game by allowing him to be close to these kills. And he had to get away because that Astral Spirit would have killed him. There was, he, he knew exactly Yeah, that was what smart was to jump against. out of that chrono. So, and they actually almost died too because um, they threw out the Astral Spirit to try to catch him out. And if he had microed it a little bit, he may have been able to connect it. But uh, yeah, so he does get away, but he's not getting those kills, which is a pretty big part about it. And his Razor, well, his Razor, I won't say he's feeding because that's a bit harsh, but like he's 0-5 right now. And a Razor that gets nothing in the early game is a Razor that does nothing in the mid game. And the same can be said mostly about any hero, but it's really severe when this guy, his main objective in fights is to get in and steal someone's damage. Like he's not a hero without that uh, ability. And if he can't get in close, then he's useless. He is absolutely useless. Kind of like an underfarmed Shadow Shaman in that sort of respect. Especially so. when it's the hero you pick to get you through the mid game, right? Like yeah. they want Razor to make the space while Void continues to farm. Uh, obviously, Centaur can help out a little bit too, but that is uh, definitely a solid point. Razor, that doesn't do anything in the early game. Well, and he's actually going to die game. again. And he's going to go down again six times. He's not, oh, yeah, like you said, he's not feeding. It's not like he's just running into them. Like, he's just being, they're manning up on him and they're killing him in the bottom lane. They, they find him in the mid lane. They'll kill him again. There's not much he can do. You can't just sit at the tier two and do nothing. Like, you still have to be on the map. You've got to get your experience. Hit a creeper too. And uh, yep. game proving very difficult right now for Rare Candy as they're down eight kills in and eight lane. minutes. Who's TPing up oh, there? The That's Skull Ice. Misses. He's level four. This is one of the most underleveled razors I think I've ever seen. They will at least kill Sunken, also level four. Uh, so Skull Ice is going to be hitting up to level five oh, after that. Gosh. And we'll get the RNG Bash. Streetlight onto Jenkins. There's the stomp. He will still be locked in, uh, and they'll be able to bring him down. He almost gets easy for his troubles. Now Nushim going to get involved. The arrow will just miss. TP going to come up as well. Let's see what Shibi is doing, though. He's got that Blink Dagger ready to unveil it now. He'll jump in for the clap. He'll bring down the Jakiro Streetlight, meanwhile. Has thrown off a two-person Chrono. And let's see, the Plasma Field, it's going to be there. Skull Ice will bring down Nushim, so the supports that gave this Razor so much trouble. He'll get some revenge. Streetlight now diving the Tier 1 Tower. They want to kill Sunken again, but the Jukes may be a little too strong. Time walking away. And they won't quite be able to kill him. It is very, very close, but just not quite. So 11 to 5 now. Rare Candy making a bit of a comeback on the scoreboard. We'll see how it reflects on the graphs. Oh, nice. Huge comeback. The um, experience graph is back almost to even, all, going yeah. all the way back to... Yeah, and taking a look at the team fight recap, I mean, 
Oh, that's a bad team fight we've got. Never mind. I I always feel disappointed when I look at that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that was a really good fight for them, and I gotta say, that entire thing was made possible because of that missed error at the beginning. They disrupted and they missed the error off the disruption, and that that it just it was so disappointing to watch. And a couple of missed errors later, and Leviathan come out. I I. I in any other sense of the game, they would have broke even with that fight, but because they were so far ahead from the early game, that's why they fell so far behind from that fight. So, yeah, they were not really out of this. far ahead. 3,000, yeah. 4,000 advantage in seven minutes is pretty ridiculous. That's like Stomp Town, but Rare Candy able to bring it back a little bit. Still concerned that Wraith King got 1,800 gold at, at 10 minutes on top of treads, and, well, we know what he wants. He might go for the Blink Dagger first, but. I doubt it. I actually imagine. I think he's going to do that, to be you, perfectly you honest. You think Shredder's going to do it, but then he's like, you know what? I build a Radiance. Well, we look at it this way. When they've got the Shadow Demon that needs to get up for a disruption, if you blink ahead and get the Wraithfire Blast off, that means easy kills every single time. So the Radiance is great, but oh, when lane. you're this far ahead... Oh, yep, go for it. Another Primal Split from Shibby here. This guy just dominates on this hero, and he will... Oh, the Fire Panda dies! He does have a Blink what? Dagger after this, so he know you know he can just Blink and stomp. He's a little out of mana, he'll Blink and attack. Sunken is there to help him out if they need it. Uh, trying to bottle up for the mana, and he'll find it. Now onto Furret. There's the Stampede to try to get him away, and it will get him away. Now coming in on the backside of this is Ice, but the Moonlight Shadow from Newsham is going to get uh, Leviathan out of dodge. This is a very awkward spot for them to be oh. fighting. So that Earth Panda dying there was definitely, or that Fire Panda dying there was definitely a huge part. I'm surprised that Jakiro didn't try juking around the trees and juking him out a little bit more. Running straight se kind of seems to me like maybe a panic move on his part or didn't really respect the Blink Dagger, but either way, uh, he should have died there and he did die there, and they get another kill. Every Primal Split has netted something for them this so far, and it's really working out for them, this Brewmaster pick. Yeah, and the space creation has been huge. First of all, the hero creating most of the space is top of the net worth at 5.4k. That's the Brewmaster. And then behind that, obviously early domination in the tri-lane got him to be 3-0 and 3, involved in half of the team's kills. And he's at 5,100 net worth with almost 3k in the bank. So looking yep, clearer and I, clearer. I, I'm going to be honest, I don't I'm agree with that build this. either, but he's going Radiance. Like, I know Shredder, and I know he's going to build Radiance. I'm going to concede my point. You're absolutely right, and I really think that he is going to go over the ratings. And watch now I mean, as I say that, he's going to buy a blink. It, yeah, that'd be pretty funny. I mean, it makes up the, the biggest limiting factor of that hero, right? Like, you start to fall behind. Wraith King, he only attacks one thing at a time. Granted, he crits and attacks hard, but you get the Radiance, and you become a Flash Farming hero. You put a blink on top of that Radiance, and suddenly you're anti mage with two lives. Not, not quite, but close enough. Yeah, so, I mean, at this point in the game, we're taking a look at Rare Candy. I, I think I said the name correctly this time. Um, so their Razor is looking a little bit better than he did. Uh, he got a kill, obviously, since the last time we uh, saw him. He was 0-5, now 1-6. And, and he's picked up a couple of uh, bits of uh, levels here. So he's level 7, almost 8. But he's still really far behind for what we'd hoped the Razor would be at this point. Only sitting on Treads and Bassy. So he's got a lot of ways to go, and I, I, I kind of worry about him right now when you're, when you're dealing with all this damage that Leviathan are putting out. Whether or not he's going to be able to do too much in this game, Shredder is actually looking down the barrel of death here as he runs away. But only only that away. first death, though. Yeah. Well, that, minus, um, that mana drain from um, Silencer is looking really good right now, and it's only three points in it, so that fourth point is going to be a lot, but... It did drain him for a pretty decent amount, about half of his mana, only almost dropping him down below the threshold of reincarnation. So, Yeah, that's true. That would have been pretty big if it got him. I wasn't watching his mana as closely as his life, but when I looked, he still had the mana for uh, reincarnate. But that would be pretty big. That's not like the fastest mana drain, though. I mean, for instance, you could have just got an illusion hero with a defusal, and then you know Wraith King's not going to be respawning. Or you can get a hero that builds Necronomicon, oh, and Shibby. Wraith King's probably not respawning. But Shibby oh, will find him an easy oh, 
going to be taking the arrow that Nushim is probably saying was pretty easy to land. Oh, the Chrono, but the leap out from Nushim. They'll throw the Moonlight Shadow. Shibby is going to still be revealed for the meantime uh, in the Chrono, but it runs out now, and that will throw the Primal Split. They know that the Time Walk was used. It's a fairly long cooldown, so Streetlight is an easy kill right here. He's dead. We'll look for the Razor actually fighting. Jenkins now up top at the Tier 1. He is also dead. So across the map, there's three kills. It's 15 to 5 at 14 uh, minutes. Lane two, and bottom lane, two. it's just the pain train everywhere on the map. Stampede was down because they had used it to initiate earlier and failed with it. Had it been up, maybe they mitigate their losses over the last 30 seconds, but hard to tell. Yeah, at this point, like, that is not something you want to be doing. I, I would imagine that Rare Candy would need to start trying to group up and find pickoffs, but instead they spread themselves thin. And the thinner, the weaker right now for this team, as they are the, the weaker team right now, especially with all these advances. And they're going to die again. Skull Ice in the mid lane. There's nothing you can do to survive this. Maybe a good save from Jakiro, but I mean, what can they do? They're going to be a leap up from Nushim as he picks up the kill. One last arrow to the knee. And now they're going to stampede, but can they find Nushim at this point? He's duking him out, going back where they don't expect, into the trees, and well. <laughs> oh, who knew that was a spot? I don't know. Since yep, the terrain changes, oh, I'm a little, no. uh, I'm a little bit of a noob, but Nusham will be able to hide away, and now the rest of the team is going to come in. The Wraith King will die. Actually, didn't have the mana for his ult, so that's a bit of success there for Fearit. And yeah, I saw the Sacred Relic in inventory, so that's pretty much ready. He's got 600 gold on top of that, losing a bit, obviously from that death. So he was quite close, and even still, this is going to be like a 17-minute radiance. I don't care what yeah. hero you build a 17-minute radiance on; it's good. Yeah, and if, if it was a naked Radiance, like, this would be a, an okay timing. But it's Radiance with Treads. Like, he's looking really good in the farm department. And dying there, definitely not the thing that he wants to be doing. But he's, he's not really worried about his position in this game because having a Radiance out right now, with the enemy being so low level, have such low HP pools with not a lot of magic resistance, they're going to just uh -oh. completely drop in. Yep, another kill. Easy kill, maybe. He's looking to run away. They got Demonic Purge. Does Yules get rid of that? I don't think it matters. Silence coming out and the Chronosphere. Demonic Purge will come through to clean up the kill onto easy. The Chronosphere not netting them anything. And in fact, probably going to mean the death of Streetlight as he's trying to run away. A Primal Split comes out. 292 stomps out, but the stone is there. And oh no, they saw Fear it. To kill spree and I think he's they good. Still, what? What's going on? They saw Fur it. I, don't, I can't say his uh, name. I'm sorry. Fur it. Fear it. Furry. <laughs> yeah. Furret. Furray. They I don't came, know, man. They saw, they I'm going to call him maybe. Fur from now on. I'll ask him yeah. post-game how to actually it's pronounce fur. it. Like, it's a Pokemon name, dude. Oh, I don't know. Is that a first-gen Pokemon? No. Then I don't know it, dude. Oh. It okay. does make sense with the name of the team being Rare Candy, though. Although, you do know if you level up your Pokemon with just Rare Candies, they were weaker. So maybe that's a, a weakness of the team. I don't know. Maybe they cheated to get their way here. Maybe we'll, they were we'll, flying up and up and down the coast, dude, trying to get the item duplication. Oh my god, that is way long ago, man. What island? Was like Rainbow I, Island or what was Cinnabar. the name? Cinnabar. Cinnabar. Cinnabar I, think. <laughs> I think it was a rainbow. After you talk to the old guy, Fur is gonna get hit with an arrow. Eat. Oh, the stomp comes out and the ice path, but there's an earth splitter, and it doesn't even matter. The astral spirit will clean him up, and I imagine the GG tap out is gonna be coming soon. I mean, Rare Candy, they definitely have worked their way to get in this uh, league, and they deserve to be here. But it's going to take a lot of work before oh, I think Nushim. we see them being uh, Leviathan as, yep, they're going to go ahead and got another kill. Nushan will go down. Oh, this is Radiance surprising. is going to hurt yep. so much. Like, look at Easy. He's just dying over there on the side. I think Shredder can uh, practically 1v3 right now as those are the, there's only three alive. He can probably 1v4 when Silencer respawns. Maybe he runs out of mana. Who knows? He still has two lives right here. He has not used the Reincarnate once this game, although he has died. He's 5-1-8, and, and he goes down, but that's second life. Meanwhile, who's still in there fighting? That's Shibby, and of course it is on the Brewmaster. He's been fighting for so long. Primal Split is coming off a cooldown in 10 seconds. I'm going to wipe him. Ferret is, is down, yeah. It's godlike here. Good game, well Good played. Game, Comes yeah. out from K292, and it's a stomp. Leviathan win it. The first game of the new season, Sivo Season 6 main. You'll probably see a lot of stuff on the overlays about tickets. That'll be out soon. Uh, hopefully... We're looking at December 17th, so like week two, two, maybe week three, well, that'll be here. Uh, but yeah, that was a that was a pretty stompy game. You got anything yep. to say well, about it? 
I, you know, you come to expect it again. This is when uh, Rare Candy is coming into the big leagues, going up against these teams constantly. And I imagine, give it a week or two, and we're going to be start to see uh, teams like Rare Candy start holding their own. But they're going to have to go up against Leviathan in the first week, which is definitely not something that you want to be seeing. And they fall a little bit short. So looking forward to them later on. They showed a little bit of promise not falling without a kill. But they definitely have some steps to take before they're able to quite get there. So really good game and to be expected. Yeah, it definitely looked like a quality Leviathan performance. Maybe Rare Candy just weren't quite up to it yet, but hopefully we'll see some great things from them as the season continues. Yep. Up next, we've got two more games. It's going to be Team Root versus Guess. Guess is a team with Trouf, which I'm sure is a player, a caster, a lot of you know, and some other great people. I think Way Too Sexy is on the roster now, so that's going to be a fantastic game. Probably the game of the night coming up next at 10:15 uh, yep. Eastern. And then Boreal versus Teamwork. They've got Monkeys Forever, Bloody Nine, I Annihilate on Teamwork. Uh, I'm not quite sure who, who is still playing for Boreal, but it should be good. And before we go, yeah. we are your beautiful casters here on camera. I hope you like the new overlays. I'm Helium. You can follow me on Twitter, Twitch, at Heliumbrella, Chicago Ted over there, at Ted Casts. And, uh, yeah, we'll be I just back. broke 100 followers over that game, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. That's what we're talking Hype. about. Hype. You need to add it. Let's add some more zeros to that, and we'll, we'll get up there. Uh, oh, but yeah. we'll be back in just a little bit, guys, so enjoy the wubs as, as usual.